So in this video I'm going to show you how to make hydroxypane, which is just a mixture of propane and hydrogen and oxygen. Okay, I'm going to use my oxyhydrogen water fuel cell and I'm going to mix propane together using this apparatus right here. Okay, it's the Lazarus fork. Well actually it's just a Prestolite head. All you got to do is take the top off and hook this hose up and then you connect it to the back right here. You see and then I use this valve to control the rate of the propane gas that enters into the water fuel cell while it's doing electrolysis. Okay? I'm going to show you that in this video how that works. That way you can burn your fossil fuel with the most efficiency. Okay? Adding, adding HHO to your fossil fuel is going to make it burn more efficiently and much hotter. You can make this little propane tank last for three or four times longer than it would normally. Just by mixing HHO. Let me show you in this video how to do that with your fossil fuel. Okay. Set that right there. And get this damn thing out of here. Come on. So you can just pack this thing full of muddy water and dirt with fucking. There you go. See, don't worry about that. You don't have to worry about it when you got to You can't do this because you're dry cell. Okay? I'm just trying to show you guys this. One of the advantages of having a wet cell where you can get your fuel. All I got to do now is add my electrolyte and fill it up to the top. Okay? So I'm going to head back in. So here we have a mixture of hydrogen, oxygen, and propane, okay? So it's so one of the great things about HHO is that it mixes with other gases very easily. So there's no way it can flash back on you when it's like this. It won't flash back because of the hydrocarbon fuel that's mixed in with the HHO gas. See that little blue flame right there? That's what you get when you mix all three gases together. Okay, and I can adjust that rate with my valve back here. So I'm just feeding it right into the main reactor core's bottom chamber. So I'm using this one to generate the gas. You can clearly see my propane connection right here. And it goes all the way around. And it connects into the back of the reactor. There's my power supply. You can see the electrolysis taking place right here. And this is where all the fuel is mixed together. So I'm gonna give you a little example. So I can adjust the burn rate of these all three of these fuels. And I can also control the flashback. So remember, hydroxypane is a much cleaner gas. It's a much cleaner gas when you add HHO. But you still really can't burn it indoors very long because you're producing carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide, very easily. See, that's the thing with, with the hydrocarbons. They pollute, it pollutes everything. But it does burn a lot cleaner with HHO. And if you use this setup outside, you can make these propane tanks last a really, really long time. It's just something to consider when using anything like this, any gas. But an oxyhydrogen flame, on the other hand, there's absolutely no release of carbon indoors. Okay, so this is one of the only fuels you can really burn inside your house or in an enclosed space. Because it only produces water when you burn it. This also produces water, but it also produces this black soot. So the world's going to have to hydro up. It's wrong to pollute the land, air, and the sea with these hydrocarbons. So I hope you can clearly see the problems we're having with the soot and the pollution. You know, carbon monoxide, this stuff's dangerous. It ruined my hose. So in the future, it's going to be different. We're going to have a hydrogen economy based on water. It makes sense. It's a very abundant resource. 
So a true oxyhydrogen flame, you can burn it in space, underwater, and you're not going to have any byproducts or any pollution, you know. But you can make hydroxypane with HHO gas. It mixes very well with other fuels. Just remember that it makes the carbon. So in a confined space in your spacecraft or indoors or in a really small space, you could burn oxyhydrogen gas, but all other fuels you can't do that. See, it tells you right here, carbon monoxide hazard. See? So you got to remember that. It's different when you have other fuels. They all act very different. Hydrogen's different from every other fuel. Remember, heat is just a measurement of how fast the molecules are moving. So as my reactor heats up as I run it, the longer I run it, the more it heats up, the faster the molecules jiggle around, and the easier it is to pull apart the gas, believe it or not. But you don't want to get it too hot. If you run a reactor too hot, you're going to make steam. I'm at about 500 watts right now. Just something to think about. And brownie motion can be seen in gases too. So a water powered flame, oxygen and hydrogen, okay that's a safe flame, and then you have your hydrocarbon over here which is giving you the carbon, the soot, you can see what it did to my hose right here. That's exactly what it says right there. So you have to burn that gas outside, huge difference between the two. A water making flame and this flame also makes water but it produces carbon So as you can see, you're going to get very different results by mixing propane with HHO gas. Okay, when you mix these three gases together, you're mixing propane, hydrogen, and oxygen all together. See, I'm able to make these electromagnetic flames that you can hook a solar panel up to. Let me show you. So you can make these really bright flames. Well, they get really bright. They light up the whole room. You can put solar panels up next to these because they're very oxidized propane flames make electricity from fire. This is something I discovered and also if you're looking at a flame like this, this is a pure oxyhydrogen flame. It's a lot different. It only makes water when it burns. There's no carbon. But when you when you add carbon to one of these flames, when you add propane to a flame like this, it will no longer flash back on you when it's like that. So you have that blue that blue propane, that carbon's going through there and it basically neutralizes your HHO. It won't flash back on you it cools it off a lot too. It's no longer 5,100 degrees. It cools it off quite a bit. As you can see, the propane is highly oxidized by the oxygen that's coming out of the water. So I've increased the power of it and you can see the light coming off of this thing. You can actually capture that with a solar panel and turn that into electricity. So now that we have an endless abundant source of clean energy in the form of hydrogen, we can uh, stop drilling for those fossil fuels and burn up the ones that are left using hydroxypane. See, we can burn up what's left efficiently and then we don't have to dig for it anymore. So that is the problem with these hydrocarbons. You know, they release carbon monoxide in this toxic soot. It's a brown smog that doesn't support life.
you know, if we pollute the land, air, and the sea, and this stuff does it invisibly, you know, it's out of humans' vision. That's one of the main problems. It's creating this brown smog, and you can't really see it right away. It takes time. We can't call ourselves an intelligent species and think we're going to be around any long time to talk about it if we keep using this stuff. So we're going to have to get away from the hydrocarbons and go to the water. Stop this pollution. So when you burn, when you burn HHO, it just makes water. So that's the only byproduct of HHO. Okay, when you burn this gas, it turns back into water again. When the water molecules recombine. Okay. Alright, just to be honest, I hated making this video. It's amazing that we're still using these toxic fuels. It's just amazing. It's filthy stuff, these carbon-based fuels. This should be extinct by now. It dirtied up my hose. So hydrogen's the way to go. Water-based fuels, using the water molecule. Hydrocarbons, they simply don't hold a candle to HHO, really. I would have rather have taken this giraffe and had it take a dump in my water fuel cell. It would have been easier to clean than these damn hydrocarbons. I would rather have a giraffe take a dump, literally a, a crap dump, right in my fuel cell than use a hydrocarbon. So I hope that helps you understand the difference between a hydrocarbon and a water fuel cell. This is the way to go. HHO wins out every time. At least it's not toxic and it's organic.